you know of all the places that are featured so far? Uh, this one on Pair Up seems to be the one that's gotten the foodies most excited about because I've had some of you guys, the viewers, actually contribute content, which I'm excited to feature. So keep an eye out for that. Along with uh, content courtesy of Shaokani Abbas, our tour guide, uh, Marco D, and also our Masters of Malaysian Cuisine chefs. I hope you enjoy. This episode of Street Food Journeys features Mark Odi's Pair Up Food Hunt Yours Truly Making a Dry Style Ipo Kaisi Ho Fun A Visit to an Ipo Kaisi Ho Fun Store A Kuala Kangsa Food Trail Malaysian tour guide Shalkani Abbas gives us the rundown on places to visit Chef Bob Adnan visiting Kelly's Castle A famous live fun noodle restaurant Chef Bob Adnan making Ipo clay pot chicken rice. One of our viewers gives us his rundown on what to eat in Ipo. Laksa Mi Pulau Panko. And our masters of Malaysian cuisine chefs answer the question, what dishes do you think of when you think of Pera? YouTube and TikTok star Marco D tries Ipo's famous bean sprouts and more in his tour of Ipo. The people of Ipo, they take their food very seriously. Toge is one of them. So we're back here in Ipo and I was feeling a bit hungry and I found a place here called Lao Wong. This place is famous for their Taogei. Now Taogei, for most Westerners, looks like this. It's bean sprouts, but they call it Taogei here and apparently it's really famous in Ipo with the chicken rice. So I've got Talgate chicken rice. Let's try it. The aroma of the chicken rice mixed with the ever so tasty roasted or steamed chicken, whichever you fancy, will make you stop, sit, and ask for a plate. They say people have been coming to this shop particularly for years, and the main star here is the Tage, of course. And when the night comes, things get up and running once again. It seems like the best time to have one of the Ipoh's most famous desserts. So I've come here for dessert. This is Alessandro special, which apparently does the best ice kajang in Ipoh. Ice kajang, also known as ABC, is this. It's basically a very, a very strange mix of stuff. We've got shaved ice, we've got ice cream, we've got these little things here that look like little worms. Uh, we have like sweet corn, nuts, all mixed together. It's a strange combination, but you know what? I'm gonna give it a go. From my first glance, it looks intimidating with all of the ingredients packed inside one bowl, like a snow mountain with oozing sweet delicacies waiting to be eaten by the giants, me. I tell you what, this, I thought I wasn't gonna like it, but you know what? It's a unique blend of stuff. We got, you know, things like nuts and sweet corn and ice cream. I wouldn't thought it would go together, but you know what? It really does and it tastes great. I'm gonna finish my ice kajang. Ipo is famous for its kaisi ho fun or shredded chicken rice noodles. I love eating this, but I also sometimes like to eat it dry style. Here's how I make it. Now in this particular segment, I'm going to make Ipo kaisi ho fun, which literally means uh, shredded chicken with uh, fresh rice noodles. Okay. Now this dish is usually served a soup style, but I sometimes like it uh, dry style, what we call gon lo in Cantonese. So I'm going to add an extra step to show you how I would make the gon lo sauce if I do decide to have it that way. Have a look. So the key part of this recipe is the chicken. You want a whole chicken. This is a 1.6 kilo chicken and I'm just poaching it. I've boiled a big pot of water and once it comes to a boil, you throw the chicken in, cover it and simmer it on low heat for eight minutes. Turn off the heat completely, but keep it submerged and covered for another 40 minutes, okay? In the meantime, I'm just chopping up some garlic chives and also some sliced fresh red chilies. Uh, chilies will just go with some soya sauce. Uh, to go with this dish, but 
Uh, now we're going to make the sauce, the gondo sauce, and I'm using some abalone sauce here along with some thick soy sauce or cooking caramel or dark soy sauce, depending, uh, it's known by a number of different terms. If you don't have uh, abalone sauce, just use oyster sauce. I'm using half and half oyster sauce and abalone sauce, but you can just use oyster sauce and more of it um, otherwise, okay? And some sesame oil, and you can add a little bit of water to this as well. And what we're going to do is boil this up until everything is dissolved. Just throwing in some pepper and some seasoning. I, I'm, use, I'm going to use some chicken powder, but you can just use a bit of fish sauce, a little bit of salt, whatever works for you, okay? So you want to simmer this till it's all dissolved and then you let it cool down and you can uh, just store it in a in a jar or in the fridge or whatever and you can use it for all kinds of noodles. Now what we're going to do now is uh, we're just going to uh, cook up some prawns, okay, uh, prawn shells in particular. I'm using a fair bit of prawn shells here, you don't have to, uh, you don't need that much for this particular dish but I like it a little bit more prawny than usual, okay? So what I'm going to do is fry up the prawn shells with oil um, and really uh, fry it till it's aromatic, crispy, and the oil is all a nice red, orangey color, right? And then what you want to do, if you were serving this soup style, this dish, uh, you would add the prawns and the oil into the uh, water, the broth that was used to cook up the chicken, okay? And you can add extra chicken bones in it to make it more flavorsome. Um, and then uh, I'll just set it aside here because I'm not making this soup style, so I'm just kind of like uh, putting it aside and using it differently, okay? But otherwise, you would just pour the whole thing in with the, the, the chicken broth. Uh, now we're going to, I'm just actually, you don't need to do this part. This is just the soy sauce. You know the chilies that we're going to serve with these noodles? Usually you would just have some soy sauce in it. Now I find that my soy sauce is a little bit sharp and salty. So what I do is I try and um, give it a, a full body flavor by just adding a little bit more water to it. Uh, again, dissolving it under some heat and adding a little bit of sugar, okay? I also add a, a dash of fish sauce, but again, you don't have to if you don't want to, okay? So that's just otherwise what would be just soy sauce. It really depends on the kind of soy sauce you're using, okay? And that's, like I said, just going to be used with the uh, with the fresh cut chilies afterwards. Now, um, so what we want to do now is we're going to poach some noodles, what we call ho fun. And the kind of noodles you want for this are the thin cut uh, fresh rice noodles, which you can find at least in Australia anyway, fairly easily in Asian grocery stores, okay? So just bringing the water to a boil, and then we're just going to throw the noodles and we're just going to blanch them quickly. You don't need to cook them for that long at all, right? Um, yeah, so with the prawn shells, again, you know, they will go in with the with the broth that's off camera here and you just want to simmer it so it's flavoursome, so it's a little bit corny and a little bit chickeny as well, okay? More chickeny than corny, but um, again, up to how you personally like it, right? So this, again, like I said, doesn't take long, you just want to blanch it quickly and you want to do it right before you serve, otherwise they'll stick together, okay? Okay, so the chicken is out of the water and you want to just shred it, okay? Now that's the key defining feature of this dish, that the chicken is not generally cut up into chunks, it's shredded, hence the name face C, which means shredded chicken. Okay, so I've just got a chunk here. Uh, you want to remove the skin, I prefer to remove the skin. I usually actually separately uh, fry up the skin till it's crispy, okay, for uh, crispy uh, you know, crispy chicken skin. But once you've shredded the chicken, you want to just season it. And I'm just adding some sesame oil, pepper, and you can add a little bit of salt or a bit of chicken powder, just give it some flavor, okay? And here I'm going to be using some prawns. The prawns I'm going to poach, okay? Uh, and you would uh, to use the water that you use to poach the chicken in, okay? Which is the chicken broth. And just poach the prawns lightly in the chicken broth. And then uh, I'm just assembling the noodles now, putting them on a plate, and then the prawns will go there. And the broth that was used to poach the prawns, you can add more prawn shells in to make it again more prawny. And then um, I'm just topping the noodles here with some of the shredded chicken, right? And some oil, the oil, the prawn oil, the beautiful fragrant prawn oil. And this is the broth, right? So if you're serving this soup style, you just pour all the broth in it and turn it into a soupy noodle dish. But again, because I'm doing it dry style, I've just basically put a little bit of the soup in it 
but topped it up with the dark sauce that I cooked earlier. And uh, in goes the prawns. And then we just garnish it with some crispy fried shallots and crispy uh, garlic granules if you like. And there you go. So very, very easy dish. And you can have the rest of the broth in a separate little bowl to eat your noodles with, okay? So there you go, that's a Ipo style gai si ho fun, but dry style, okay? Enjoy! One of our MOMC viewers from Perak visits a hawker stall, Ipo Boy, and has a chat with the owner. Okay, Fun 又會想到可以買雞絲河粉的嗯是的喜歡做雞雞肉幫我幫你做的你這裡這麼多人你會開多地方沒有<笑> Thank you. Perak's royal town is Kuala Gangsa. Here are some dishes to try as compiled by a local group called Gluters. Award-winning tour guide Shaokani Abbas gives us the roundup on places to visit in Perak. Shaokani, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. 
I remember the time we went to Pera. So we visited a number of places. Uh, so this is actually a good conversation I'm looking forward to. Tell me about Pera, what you know about it. Well, Pera has a long been one of the most popular uh, tourist destination in Malaysia. It is coined as the land of Greece. It is an, ah. and it's a, it's a second largest state in the peninsula of Malaysia. And uh, among the places of interest which always people looking for is to visit the royal royal town of Pera. It's at called the Kangsa. Uh -huh. And uh, as you know, the most beautiful mosque I haven't seen in Malaysia is a Ubudiyah Mosque in Kuala Kangsa. It's something like 1001 Arabian night type of mosque in Kuala Kangsa. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you, you've been there, right? And uh, along the way, we can go to Langong, yeah? the, at, the, at the dam there, the, the lake there. There's a very few homestay there. One of them is Suka Suka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suka Suka. Yeah. I, I'm very memories of Suka Suka. For those of you who um, have never been to Pera, if you do go, go to Suka Suka. It's like a, a total getaway and it's like staying in a kampong with your own hut and all that. And I had yeah. Noah with me. It was so much fun. <laughs> huge house, very huge house. <laughs> Traditional yeah. house, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And then Ipoh is one of the, it's a must visit, you know. And uh, Lonely Planet in 2016 voted Ipoh as the sixth best place to visit in Asia. Yeah. And also uh, New, York, New York Times and Lonely Planet also voted Ipoh as top three best coffee town in Asia. Yeah, even even Booking dot com in twenty eighteen voted Ipo as top ten destination to taste local food. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, yeah, nice. Yeah. So to me, uh, I love the local food there. The 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 hawker food there is very very different from other states in Malaysia. And then you can go to Kelly Castle down oh, down near, near Ipo, and then you can go also to. Uh, they have a place uh, along the highway. It's a animal sanctuary, you can find orangutan. Oh, really? Which is, orangutan only can be found in Sabah and Sarawak. But this yeah. in yeah, this place is a sanctuary for the orangutan for research. Oh. And every every orangutan born have a birth certificate. When they are adult, they are released back to the jungle. But there's so much more that I want to see. So I'm looking forward to it. Thanks again so much uh, for this, Shankani. Okay, bye-bye. Really? Okay, I'll see you next time. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Kelly's Castle is a well-known tourist attraction in Pera. Our MOMC chef, Bob Adnan, dropped in for a visit. Hello guys, uh, we meet again. Uh, now Bob at the Batu Gajah Pera and Bob want to discover about Kelly Castle. Let's go, come follow Bob. And then they have one room in the middle here. It's Helen's room. So both of them can go a secret uh, way to go out if anything happens to them. So now, Bob at the rooftop. They have another level on top. They call it Tower of Kelly Castle. In this segment, we visit a homemade noodle restaurant called Gopeng Lai Fun that's been in business since the 1970s. This is Lan Lai Fun. I started in 1970. This is 無邊最出名的奶粉
，樣樣都愛好嘅嘢，所以整到嗰啲味道就唔同。Chef Bob Adnan is a fan of Ipo clay pot chicken rice. He shows us how to cook it. Hello guys, we meet again. Uh, I'm Chef Bob. It's most popular in Ipo, in Perak. We call it clay pot chicken rice or we call it Ipo clay pot chicken rice. But this time I want to twist a little bit uh, with my own style. I'm learning this one with the Hong Kong chef plus with this local chef from Negri Perak, Ipo. Okay, the first step that we have to do for uh, Ipo chicken rice, we need to have a chicken meat. So Bob using a chicken leg like this, but I have already deboned and then I cut it slice until making a cube like this. This one is ginger blend. Alright, you just uh, uh, blend the ginger, you just add it with a garlic chop here. We have to add soya sauce. Alright. Then, Bob using oyster sauce, okay, all together, dark soya sauce, about three tablespoons dark soya sauce. This one, we need to mix everything, must be equal, two tablespoons of sesame oil, one tablespoon of sugar. Mixing well, I have to put it a, a corn flour, mixing very well, I really love to add a little bit of a garlic oil. I just have to have to put a little bit. Actually, it's no need to put, but I really love a garlic oil. I just put a tablespoon. This is shiitake mushroom, dry shiitake mushroom. Mix it well and rest in the fridge about at least two hours, or you can put it in overnight. Do one technique like this: shake it all over. Ginger here, very thin slice. Just add three four slice and. A spring onion. I really love the spring onion. I want the rice to be fried earlier. So 300 gram of a rice that been cleaned earlier. You don't want also the rice to stick together at the water. If 300 gram, the thing is 300 gram of a rice. Then we have to add the water about 500 ml. Like I said, you also can cooking. The rice as usual, as normal. So let it have about five minutes. Okay, after five minutes, uh, you see all the smoke on going up. So you open up. You see the rice is already almost cooked, uh, half cooked. So you have to mix very gently. Slow down the fire. Then you add the one chicken that the one we are marinate earlier. You just add on top. Mm. I love to add a little bit of the skin of the chicken, uh, so looks looks more moist. Okay, then the sauce. You don't throw it. Just sprinkle on the, all over the top of the rice. So we cover it again about another five to eight minutes. All right, let's see. Okay, after about uh, six to seven minutes, almost eight minutes now. Look at that, the chicken and the rice. Ooh, so, get the garlic oil on top, sprinkle with this. The chili. Wow! Okay. So, Bob, want to try? Just be like. Mmm, super delicious, yummy. Try at home the recipe Ipo chicken rice, Bob style. Very nice. See you guys. Perak native and MOMC community member Michael Chong gives us his foodie suggestions for your next trip to Ipoh. Hello, I'm Michael Chong from Selangor, West Malaysia and I was born in Ipoh, Perak. Let me share with you some popular foodie places over there. First up, restaurant Ipoh Kong Heng for their Kai Si Ho Fan or shredded chicken in smooth rice noodle soup. Also try their Dan Dan or chilled silky egg caramel pudding. 
make sure you drive up to restaurant Ong King Lim for yin kuk kai or salted baked chicken bursting with aromas of Chinese herb and smokiness. Also go to restaurant Chunki or Tai Shu Kyok, Big Fruit Tree Restaurant for stuffed Yong Tau Fu or stuffed fish paste with tofu and vegetables. Quench all your thirst and swash down that savory food with funny mountain soya bean curd or tau fu fa. Also drink their ice cold soya bean milk extracted to you on the spot. Satisfy all your snack cravings with Ana Dan Rango, yummy and crunchy snacks at classic Malaysian Indian roasted nut shop with lentils, beans and crisps. Also get sesame peanut candy from Mayway Biscuits, freshly baked by the owner. Never leave Ipoh without stopping by Asai Fruits Trading for super big fresh pomelos from Tambun nearby Ipoh downloaded for you. I truly hope you can visit Malaysia someday and go to Ipoh Perak for their delicious food. It was great sharing with you. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Pulau Pangko is a popular resort island which is part of Perak and the home of a unique version of laksa. Here's how it's made. Tak boleh, tak sedap Masukkan kuah 
Our masters of Malaysian cuisine chefs Rene Jufri and Chef Joe answer the question: What dishes do you think of when you think of Perak? Hi everyone, Rene Johari here from Dubai. So talking about Perak, okay, it's quite unique. Uh, Perak dishes that I can uh, remind myself with is first is uh, white coffee. People white coffee, uh, chee cheong fan, and then we have uh, laksa kuala, uh, rendang to. My favorite is rendang dendeng uh, and also kelamai. Uh, so if anyone wants to know about kelamai, so try and find in Perak. So all the best, enjoy Perak. I used to grow up in Nepal when I was uh, in the middle uh, school. So normally um, in in Perak, you normally in Ipoh mostly you can find uh, this. Uh, we call it salted chicken. So this salted chicken is very succulent and infused with the um, Chinese herbs. So the other one is uh, in Jelapang, I think. Uh, there is a nice uh, rojak stall, beautiful rojak stall. You can see a lot of people waiting there. And of course, um, you have to try the Ipoh uh, famous uh, chicken rice, what they call it, um, bean sprout chicken. Yeah, bean sprout chicken. Or the other one for the Malay one, maybe you can try laksa telur goreng bersarang. This is uh, quite nice also. But of course, for those coffee lover, don't forget, you must try their Old Town White Coffee. So there you go, that's our little whirlwind tour of a pair up. Obviously, not enough time to do it justice. So if you want access to our bonus content, make sure you sign up, okay? At malaysianchefs.com slash street food journeys and we'll add you to our mailing list and you'll get all the recipes and all the extra clips. Now, uh, don't forget to tune in again next week. We're covering Trungganu this time around. And uh, have a great week ahead. I'm Jackie M.